Hi, I'm Neil Hunt. I'm the Digital Content Lead for TV Connect, and I'm here with Brenton Au of uh, Touchstream. Thanks. Brenton, so can you tell me a little bit about what Touchstream does? Yeah, sure. Um, basically, we do live stream monitoring. Uh, so by anyone that has a lot of live streams uh, that, that are delivered over the internet, OTT, uh, we are monitoring them, telling them uh, are they working, are they performing within reasonable uh, expectations. Okay, and what is the, what's the um, impact of not getting that, that experience right for them? Oh, well, Luke, there's masses of uh, data out there on the internet, that lots of re research and more reports, it's like something like 33% of people will have, uh, abandon a stream if it doesn't uh, perform well, 50% if it doesn't start up within five seconds, you know, a lot, lot of statistics. Uh, basically, if, if streams aren't performing well or don't start, um, people will abandon that service and probably the, the, the biggest uh, worry that a lot of our, our customers have is that they'll ask for a refund. Okay. So okay. that's a big cost. So how do you go about kind of you know, benchmarking or measuring what, what good performance is? Well, it, it's, it's, re it's relatively simple for us. Um, the, the, basically we're checking is, is it available? Are all of the bit rates for a stream available? Is it performing within defined threshold? A lot of things can go wrong with, with a live stream. So, so li that's why we focus on live. Uh, it's, it's, there's so many things as you're acquiring the signal, you're encoding it, you're packaging it, you're delivering it, and that has to happen every second of every day. So it's actually a long, complex series of steps that happen with a lot of different technologies, and uh, there's a lot that can go wrong. So it's a busy show. Yeah, Apologies so for the tannoy, but we are live, so we'll, we'll crack on. Um, so I mean, I, I guess you know you've you talk about you know the several steps in in that, that stream. How do you how do you successfully monitor all of those without slowing the process down, I guess? Well, we, we're actually a synthetic monitor and we're monitoring from the internet to the CDN uh, and also to the, to the customer origin. So we can tell the difference between what's happening at the CDN and what's happening at the origin. And by, in, in, by some, you know, we understand how a live stream should work, so we can tell if things are slowing down further behind the chain, further back than we, we're actually technically monitoring at. So we can tell you if an encoder's slowed down things like that. So we'll identify those problems just by checking at the CDN's front door. Okay, and then how do you advise, you know, what, what's the next step? How do you advise clients? Well, you know, they, they, we, we have multiple alerting mechanisms from the simple email SMS alerts, uh, some integrations with some other, other third-party uh, alerting tools, uh, and also our own API. So a lot of our big customers like Sky, they, they get the status of everything from the thousand live streams that we monitor and plug it into their own internal tools which have got additional monitoring in them as well and then they alert from that as well. So multiple methods of getting getting the data out and getting people alert very quickly. I mean, where next then for live streaming and live stream in fact? Well, where next for live streaming? Um, it's got to improve more. I mean, we're, we're working very closely with the CDNs. Uh, and uh, particularly the biggest one, and, and we've actually uh, been d done an integration with them. So by any of our customers that we monitor their streams from specific CDNs, we then share that data live with the CDN. So this is basically giving them the opportunity to minimise the mean time, to, or even get rid of some of the, the, the errors that they find, and, but at least minimising the time to repair them. Now, this is going to continue to happen because of the minimisation of it, because People are not going to put up with it. And as I said at the beginning, there's a, there's a lot of statistics out there that can tell you that people will abandon and just ask for their money back, call your call center. I mean, a lot of people underestimate the, 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 the number of actual customer complaints. Every one of them, this American stats say, costs the company $13 just to have someone answer the call and, and record the complaint. So if you've got a, a live sporting event uh, with 200,000 people, 200, people watching it, and 50% of them complain, that's going to cost you a lot of money just in answering the calls. Yeah, yeah. So we spoke to um, BT earlier and we talked about, you know, the, the, the oncoming kind of four, impact of 4K on this, but yes. also um, further down the line, kind of 360 immersive. Ah, yes, that's huge. So, yeah. I mean, what, what do you see the challenges there? Of, of well, basically the internet is, is, uh, is got to be up to, to providing it and we're getting a lot of home broadband, particularly in, here in the UK, uh, a lot of home broadband is going fiber, going that. so you've got that bit working. But, but basically the chunks are getting bigger, so the, the ability to deliver that and deliver it through, through the content delivery network, the bigger the chunks, the more things that are, that are potentially going to go wrong, the more easily it can slow down. So there's, um, uh, you know, 
got to be better monitoring of this to make sure that you can deliver these supersized uh, streams. And yeah, as you say, three, 360 is, is massive. I mean, we've, we've done some trials on that with one of our customers and it's just really hard because the data, the data pipe is so big that's required to do it. And if you've got a lot of people doing it, there's going to get a lot more problems. Yeah, yeah. Brenton, thank you very much for your time today. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.